Merry Christmas. We welcome you to worship on this Christmas day to Trinity Lutheran, those of you who are gathered here in the sanctuary, and those of you who are watching live stream or over the YouTube. We wish you a blessed and Merry Christmas. We continue with the Christ candle litany and lighting of the Advent wreath candles. Because injustice and despair threaten to overwhelm us, we pray for hope. Because so many swords have not yet been beaten into plowshares, we pray for peace. Because grief and loss weigh so heavily, we pray for joy. Because hatred is still so strong, and because people all over the world are suffering, we pray for love. God has come to us as a child. Christ is present in our world. May the light and the fire from these candles burn away everything that is preventing the God of hope and peace and joy and love from being born among us. Brothers and sisters, be not afraid. Even now, even now, the light of Christ is overwhelming the world. Our gathering him is angels we have heard on high. Shall seize day. Oh. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave us your only Son to take on our human nature and to illumine the world with your light. By your grace, adopt us as your children and enlighten us with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear our scriptures. Good morning. Um, Our first reading comes from Isaiah 61, verses 10 through 62, verses 3, on this first Sunday of Christmas. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in, it is spring up. It is to spring up, so that the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fear. 
The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and 5 through 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things. Through him, he also created the world. He is a reflection of God's glory and the impact imprint the exact imprint, imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become a much superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Paul see, when the fullness of the time has come, children, when the fullness of time has come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit, his son, into our hearts crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. Gospel is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The Holy Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he 
gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word of flesh became, the word became flesh, excuse me, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, praising you and proclaiming your glory. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of the hearts of those gathered here in the sanctuary and those at home be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock, our strength, our redeemer, and most certainly you are the word brought to live among us. Amen. I read a story, I love stories, you all know that by now, about someone who was, had an unusual family, and we all probably think we have unusual families, but they had a daughter who was not real sure she was going to get what she wanted for Christmas. So she had wrapped her own present. She bought her own present. Have you ever done that? And the rest of the family looked at one another and said, hmm, wonder what this is all about, because she was always trying new things. And she took the package that had her name on it and shook it. I wonder what's in here. It has my name on it, but it doesn't say who it's from. And she unwrapped it carefully and discovered that it was something that she really had wanted all along. And she exclaimed, oh, just what I wanted. She had bought it, wrapped it, and put it under the tree and given herself something that she really wanted for Christmas. I'm reminded of that car commercial where they give each other or they give themselves a car. That must be nice. Well, that family thought that was funny, and that was just her. On Christmas, we do tend to think about that person that we're buying a present for, and we do tend to get presents from those who know us best and love us the most. I have one son who's particularly interested, was when he was growing up, in science. So any science kit, we knew we were OK. Another son really likes Star Wars things, so if it was a Star Wars item, I knew I was okay. Another son loved to read, so I knew if I got a book, or we purchased a book, it would be all right. There are sometimes strange gifts. I was a sophomore in high school once, and my mother gave me a teddy bear, and I said, what? <laughs> what is this? And it was yellow. It wasn't regular colored teddy bear. And she said, well, I had forgotten to buy you something, and so I had this, and I wrapped it up. My mother was honest. That was one of the strangest gifts I ever received, but I had that teddy bear for a long time. I took it to college, and many of my friends came in and snuggled and hugged that teddy bear when they were lonesome. So in a way, it was a good gift. I'm sure you might have received something wondering, what in the world did I get this for? One year when I was at the seminary, my boys gave me a used but rebuilt computer from Augustana. It was one of those that only had the orange print on it, one of the really first ones. And, but I loved it because I could process, it was a word processor, and I could type on it, and if I made a mistake, I could go back and erase it. I didn't have to type the whole page all over again. It was a wonderful gift. Unusual, probably, but wonderful. This year, my husband and I, we decided that our boys and their wives 
and their children all have just about everything that they need. And they also have probably everything they want, or they can get what they want. So we decided to give them a certain amount of money, and they could go to ELCA Good Gifts. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's in, on a website for Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. And you can buy a goat for someone uh, who doesn't have a lot of money for $50, and they will have milk. And uh, maybe if you buy two goats, then you could have a male and a female, of course, then you could have baby goats, and you could have meat. Also, farm life. You can buy honeybees, a, a home of honeybees for $10. You can buy a flock of chicks for $10. A uh, cow is a little expensive. A cow is $500. But I told them, I said, if you want to bundle, if you want to go together, and, uh, but you have this amount of money, each of you. My six granddaughters were appalled. Uh, they just were, because I could tell them that there's a place in there, there's tuition for a girl to go to school in Africa and in India for $40. That's her tuition. And my oldest granddaughter, who was 19, she said, what do you mean? The girls have to pay tuition? I said, yes. Do the boys? No. That's not fair, Nana. I said, I know it's not fair. That's why there is this gift. So each one of my six granddaughters, that is one of the things they chose, $40 for tuition. Our youngest grandson, he said, I don't like shots. But I know with vaccinations, I don't get measles. I don't get polio. I don't get strep, or not strep throat, whooping cough. So he was, there was a, a line item there for buying vaccinations. There is a tub that a baby probably could sit in for, but it can be used for the whole family for washing things up. And there's containers to carry water in. Try that. Look at that site sometime. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. It can be at somebody's birthday. I got the idea from a friend of mine who said the same thing about his children and grandchildren. They have their needs. They're met. And they have their wants. If they need something, if they want something, they can get it. But these people can't. Oh, there's Bibles. You can buy Bibles. Are, uh, I can't remember. But blankets are $10 a blanket, and our ladies send quilts. So there's just all kinds of things in there. You can get plants. Oh, I know, that's the other thing my nephew, or nephew, grandson got, was fruit trees. He said, Nana, you mean they don't have any fruit trees? I said, well, I think they have some, but they need some help, and they get some education in husbandry and in farming and recycling, and they get seeds, and they get some encouragement from an ag person. Just something to think about. Millions and millions of people around the world celebrate this greatest gift of Jesus Christ. And we give because he gave. He, the Son of God, Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 God knows the best, and he loves us the most. And so it makes sense that God has given us the greatest gift of all in Jesus Christ. And yet, as we see in today's lesson that Robin read, the greatest gift, the greatest giver is sometimes rejected. John, in the Gospel, says, that Jesus came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. It was as if the world, they took that, oh, well, thank you, you know, and then they put the present back up on the shelf, and they thought, well, I wonder if we can re-gift this. This is not a gift for re-gifting. Jesus' life was marked by rejection. In a way, he was rejected 
not meanly, I don't think, by the innkeeper. It was just crowded in Bethlehem because of the hundreds of people that had come to register. He was rejected as an illegitimate child of Joseph. Usually when they are a boy and they're growing up, they're called the son of Joseph. Our boys would have been called the son of Jim. Robbins got some sons, and they would be called the son of Wes. He was rejected because they didn't think Joseph was the father, and they knew he'd been told that. So he was called the son of Mary. Jesus was betrayed by Judas and rejected by the other disciples who all ran away that night when Jesus was arrested. He felt rejected because what did he cry out? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For many people, Christmas time can be painful because of strained relationships. More than that, more than that, there is a sense of rejection. The good news is that God understands that and God cares. God knew his gift would be rejected. He knew that. Isaiah, over 700 years earlier, had said, he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised, Isaiah 53. God knew his greatest gift would be rejected, but he gave it anyway. And that is the good news of the gospel, that although the world rejected Jesus, Jesus did not and does not reject us. In fact, Jesus accepted people that were often rejected by others. He accepted the leopards who lived on the outside of town because they had been rejected by society. He even touched them and healed them. Jesus accepted the Samaritan woman at the well who had a reputation of being that woman. He even spoke with her and he listened to her and he asked her to get her some wa- him some water. And then there were the tax collectors. He ate with them. Good grief. They were just horrible people because they were in cahoots with the Romans and they got a little money under the table from their taxes that they collected. He welcomed them and held them in his arms. And yet Jesus, the gift who was rejected, did much more than accept us as we are. He gave his life. He died on the cross for our sins. Jesus came not only to accept us, but to save us. I asked Alex if we could sing the hymn of the day, and it would be, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. I grew up knowing it, and maybe some of you did too, Good Christian Men Rejoice. They changed it in the, when we got the green hymn book. With heart and soul and voice, Now he he need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Although most people rejected Jesus, and some still do, Jesus tells us, or John tells us, that some did not. Some people actually accepted Jesus. But to all who received him and who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God through adoption. The verb, and I love to look at the roots of words, receive, when you receive this present, it has a lot of hidden meaning in the Greek. It means to accept but it also has the meaning to take home inside. So in other words, we accept this gift of Jesus and we take him home into our hearts. 
That's the best response to the greatest gift to accept Jesus and welcome him into our hearts. I think of that song, Into My Heart, Into My Heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. When we believe the gospel and receive Jesus Christ and welcome him into our hearts and lives, not only do we receive forgiveness of sin and the hope of eternal life, we receive that adoption that Robin read about. This is the heart of Christmas. But when the fullness of time had come, God had sent his only son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our lives, crying, Abba, Father, from Galatians. I want to make note of that word, Abba. It's an Armenian word, and it would have been a word that the people of the day, of Jesus' day, would have said in referring to their father. The Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, it starts out, Abba. And so we think, well, that means father. It's been interpreted to mean father, but it has another meaning, a stronger meaning. Do you know what it is? Daddy. So you think of whom you call daddy. When did you use that word to speak to your father, earthly father, when you were a little one, right? When you were scared, when something odd or strange was going on, you reach out for daddy. It's really a word of closeness and a word of endearment. When our son, Andrew, died, it was on a Friday, and I called my parents here in South Dakota. We were in Wisconsin, and I was praying that my dad would answer the phone because I knew I couldn't tell this to my mother. And as soon as dad answered the phone, which is what I called him, you know what came out of my mouth? Daddy. And I started crying. Because this was terrible news. Daddy, I need you. Daddy, I want you here. Daddy. So we cry out, Abba, Abba. We are crying out to our heavenly Daddy. We believe what he has said in John 3.16. And we have received Jesus Christ, and we have welcomed Jesus Christ, and he has adopted us as his children because he wants to and because he loves us. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to do a thing. See what love Daddy has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are, 1 John 3. This gift of adoption is rooted in the grace of God. Again, this goes back to the collect or the prayer of the day and reminds us that we have been made God's children by adoption and grace. Grace means God loves us all the time. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's it. God is on our side. Even though we have often rejected him, He's accepted us. I love you. I love you anyway. And that before we loved him, before we even thought about loving him, he had already loved us into being. And then he gave us the greatest gift because he wanted to. And he not only welcomes us to himself, he adopts us as his children. All this is found in the baby that was born on Christmas Day. God, God became human, incarnate, man divine, Jesus Christ who came to save us. Christ was born to save. We messed up. 
People have been messing up since Adam and Eve. And that's not what God wanted. But there is evil in the world. God didn't cause this evil. He gave us free will. We can decide. He loves us all the time and for all time. God gives us something else that no one else can give. And that is salvation in God. The label on the present, you know, to and from, to, and then you put your name in there, and then it's from God, whatever your name is. God knows us the best, and he loves us the most. And on Christmas Day, God gave us Jesus, his only son, the greatest gift of all. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of glory, you bring your word to birth among us. As you spoke through prophets and ancestors, empower your church to proclaim your name with boldness and tenderness, that your salvation is revealed to all the ends of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Protect the beauty of mountains and valleys. Save glaciers, tundra, and arctic lands from the threat of changing climates. Sustain all things by your powerful word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You send messengers to announce peace. Build trust among nations. Strengthen relationships that reach beyond borders. Grant safety to ambassadors, relief workers, military personnel, 
and health care providers who travel across the world. Redeem your, reveal your redemption through their work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring hope to all people. Bring wholeness to all who long for your comfort and companionship. Revive aching spirits and restore tired bodies. Bring healing and wholeness to all who long for mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You are the fullness of grace and truth. Bless ministries of generosity in this congregation and community. Open our doors in welcome. Extend our table to guests and send us out with provisions for those who lack food, water, shelter, clothing, or companionship. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. Claim us as your children in this life and in the next. Encourage us by the witness of the saints across the ages who have testified to your light and life. We are thankful, tremendously thankful for the safe return of Pastor Dirk back to Madison, and we look forward to his coming to serve again in our congregation here at Trinity. We thank you, Lord, for giving him safe travel and good health. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Jesus Remember us when you come into your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may now uh, take that top off and take the bread and say to yourself, this is the body of Christ given for me. Reach down a little further and take the cover off and the grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Sometimes I'm not always happy about these little things, that rectangular things we can carry around in our pockets, but today I was glad because I got messages. And I just have to... It takes me a little while. I wanted to share this. I had talked with Bev Mater earlier this week. Her husband, Jack, had had a heart attack down in... Surprise, Arizona, where they go for the winter, and had been on the life saving resuscitation or machine for breathing. And they made a decision this past week to take him off, and he passed away 
and went to his eternal home yesterday. So if you remember, Bev Mater and their families, eight children, I think, and they all live kind of in South Dakota in this area, be with them. And then uh, also I heard from Lisa that Jan Enright's mother died earlier this morning. I don't have a name for her mother or any plans, um, but keep those families in your hearts and prayers at this Christmas time. Jack's funeral will be later this spring. Um, she didn't know just when. They wait until they talked it all over with their kids. So that's what, what I have here. And of course, the other good news is that Pastor Dirk is back, safe and sound. There were times when I'm sure he wondered, as long as the rest of us, if he was going to get back. And we're happy, so happy that he is back with his family at home and that he will soon, January 4th, he will be back here at church. He has a brief time that he has to um, quarantine. So uh, we look forward for him to come to being back here at services. I hope you all have a happy, blessed, Merry Christmas. And uh, our sending him is God rest, you merry gentlemen.
Go in peace. Go in joy. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thank mm-hmm. you.